welcome back to my channel. You miss me? Sorry I haven't uploaded a video in a while to the like five people who even follow me, but uh, hopefully more people will in the future because I'm going to get better at uploading videos on a more regular basis. So um, stay tuned for that. But today I just wanted to do like a kind of impromptu, silly video, just like an update video on things that I'm into right now, things that I've been watching, the new Disney Plus, the new Blue's Clues, Blue's Clues and You that just came out, and so many other things. So, let's get into it, baby. So the first thing I want to talk about is Blue's Clues and You. So I just watched the new reboot of Blue's Clues featuring Josh, who is a Filipino, um, the host is Filipino, right? And I loved it, oh my gosh. Oh, so, if you don't know, my history with Blue's Clues is one of pure nostalgia because I grew up on Blue's Clues from the day it premiered on TV. So when I was five years old, I couldn't go to kindergarten at first because I was five years old, but my birthday was in October. So I wouldn't, so by the time school was like let in for that school year, I was only four years old and I couldn't go to school because my birthday wasn't until October. So I had to wait a whole year and stay home with my mom, which was actually really awesome. I loved the fact that I didn't have to go to school for a whole year. Like that was really great for me, especially since I'm a very introverted person and just like a lot of things. I have dyslexia and a lot of things. So it gave me a little bit more time to develop and mature. And also I was just happy to have the time to spend with my mom. Like. I just got to spend time with my mom and my family and it was a beautiful, beautiful thing. So during that time period, I got to see the premiere of Blue's Clues. I remember it was a, a fall day, I remember, and it was in 96. And me and my mom were outside and we were picking leaves from the ground and we brought them back in and we were making one of those books you know the books where you put the leaves in the book like it's a binder or something and you put the leaves in the book and like press them together and they make like the leaves like really like flat and they're like leaves that you can like use for crafts and stuff and like also just makes really pretty like images in your books and so me and my mom were doing that and then i remember after we did that blue's clues premiered and i was so excited because i really didn't know anything about blue's clues at the time because i'm like five years old and with a new show but I loved everything about Nick Jr. at the time. Nick Jr. was my A1 from day one. Nick Jr., PBS Kids, oh, Cartoon Network, and Nickelodeon. Those were my channels, maybe. I was living on those channels, especially when you didn't have cable. Like the days my dad couldn't afford to pay for the cable bill, which was fine, I had PBS. And PBS Kids back in the day used to be poppin', baby. It used to be on and poppin', okay? When I did not have cable, I used to go to PBS. I'd be watching me some Bill Nye the Science Guy, Arthur, Big Comfy Couch, Sesame Street, like I, it was, it was on and popping, baby. It was, it was, it was really a vibe. Okay, it was a whole entire vibe, and I loved it. But back to Blue's Clues. So yeah, I got to watch the full premiere of Blue's Clues with Steve, and it was just, it was a whole entire everything. Like I love Blue's Clues to this day. Like I'm a 28 year old woman, and I love Blue's Clues. Like everything about Blue's Clues. Now, I know. There are a lot of us out there that didn't take kindly to when Steve left the show and went to college, even though he's a grown man. But I mean, everybody goes to college at their own age, right? And their own pace. We don't shame out here. But um, yeah, when Steve left and Joe took over, we were not too particular on it. But by then, like a lot of us had stopped watching Blue's Clues anyways. So at that point, did it matter to us? No, but we were just being nitpicky because we can be. But um, yeah, Blue's Clues is, is A1 from day one, baby. It is, it honestly is. It's one of my favorite Nick Jr. shows. To this day, I can watch every episode and get so happy and so nostalgic and just, oh, my heart, right? So when they said they were making a reboot of, of Blue's Clues, I got super, super scared because a lot of the reboots that they've been making for my nostalgic properties from when I was a child have sucked. And I'm just gonna say it, they have. They have not been good. Girl World, not a good show. Fuller House, I won't say it sucks, but I mean, I wasn't really into Full House back in the day anyways. I watched it when it came into syndication, but I wasn't like a huge, huge fan. Like I wasn't like obsessed with it or anything. So for me, it's like, that was cute. And like, I still watch it just cause it's, you know, from the nineties, but I, and then whatever. As long as DJ and Steve end up together, that's all that matters in my life, you'll hear. 
But um, yeah, like so many reboots of all of my nostalgic properties have just sucked. I don't know why. And so I was nervous that this one would suck too. Oh no, baby. Oh no. They took this show and they said this was a very important show to all of our audience from 1996 to like 2002 or 2003. I don't remember when it actually went off the air because I remember I stopped watching after a while. But um, they know it was important to us. And so they were like, let's not take a chance and flop on this. And oh baby, did they not. I watched the very first episode of Blues, Clues, and You, which I will link down at the bottom in the description so you guys can watch it too. And it was incredible, y'all. It was honestly a whole entire vibe. It gave me the nostalgic feels on point, okay? First of all, Joe, we don't like. But Josh, he was a vibe, okay? Josh, the new Filipino host, he is incredible. And I think the reason I love him so much, besides the fact that he's the person of color represent, hey, hey, he's representing all the people of color out there. He also is one of us. And when I say he's one of us, I mean, he's a millennial. He grew up with the original Blue's Clues. And so he understands how important this new Blue's Clues is to kids and how important the old Blue's Clues was to our generation and how the new Blue's Clues is gonna be really important to the new generation. So he knows we can't flop, right? And so he's just an incredible host. Like I love, 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 love Josh. He's incredible. Like Steve is of course number one. He's my ace boom bay. I love him. He's incredible. He was from day one and we love Steve. But I think Josh could be a number two. Sorry, Joe. I don't know. For my generation, we just don't like change a lot. I mean, you saw how we felt about, you know, when Aunt Viv became light skin instead of dark skin and, you know, Jenna Huber got kicked out. But um, we don't like change that much, okay? We don't. So when people change from different characters to different characters, we're like, eh, not too fond. But in this way, we like it. Or at least I like it. Because I feel like the new uh host of blues clues and you is just incredible he's a millennial and i'll get to why i say he's a millennial and like really gets the vibe of what blues clues is later when i describe the episode but he's incredible the voice actors and everything for blue and magenta salt and pepper side table drawer um uh, uh shovel and pail mailbox all the whole crew the whole crew probably lamp too i haven't seen lamp yet I think there was a lamp anyways but um yo the whole crew sounds exactly alike just like they did back in the day i'm here for it and um yeah the vibe is just very nostalgic for me now josh plays a guitar whenever they do the classic songs we just got a letter we just got a letter except for now it's not we just got a letter but now it's we just got an email we just got an email like now it's that and also they still do, of course, I'm gonna find the first paw print. That's the first clue. They put it in there enough because it's whose clues? Blue's clues. I love it. I love it so much, right? And um, yeah, Blue's clues and you is just that warm nostalgic feeling that you always wanted. You don't want too much change from your childhood memories, but the changes that they do do for this show are really good. They gave him a cell phone instead of having him have a rotary phone, which is completely fine. I'm fine with that, but they didn't take it too far. They don't have all these apps and smartphone stuff that they have on there. They just have them have a phone. You can take pictures with it and that's cool. And um, you can video call and that's cool. But um, they don't have any like high tech whatever. And he still does the blue sky do, you can too. That's cool when they jump into the paintings and they jump into the whatever. That's really cool, I love that. Um, and they just, they bring the feels. They bring the feels honestly. So let's talk about the whole episode in general. So this episode basically starts off with Blue, or Magenta basically calls Blue on Josh's phone. And okay, so I'm 28 now, so of course I have all these questions about how does a dog call on the phone? But I mean, I'm trying to really like not put my whole, I'm an adult now and I have questions about everything that goes on all the time vibe into something that's for children. Like it doesn't matter at this point. Like I don't know why I'm trying to act like it's, oh, such a big deal, it's not. But, okay, so Magenta calls Blue on Josh's phone and says that she wants to have a play date. So Magenta comes over to hang out with Blue. And so basically the whole episode is about Josh trying to find out what Blue wants to do with Magenta when she comes over for the play date. 
And so the very first clue that ends up being on the screen is Josh. And the way that he handles this is so freaking me. Oh my gosh, if I were on Blue's Clues, this is exactly how I would act. Because he becomes the clue, right? And for the whole entire show, all he does is go, you know I was a clue. I was a clue. Today I was a clue. And I love it so much. It gives me so much nostalgia. Like, and he just does it in such a cute way because he's like so proud of the fact that he got to be a clue. And I'm like, that is exactly me. If I ended up on this show, I would be so excited to become a clue because this show is something that's so important to me. And like, man, being able to be a clue is so cool, right? I love it. It's incredible. Um, but basically, they go, they, they talk to Salt and Pepper, which I'm hoping that they end up showing their baby Paprika. Because I remember back in the day on the original Blue's Clues that uh, Salt ended up having a baby. Salt and Pepper ended up having a baby and then they had a little baby and her name was Paprika and it was so cute. Oh my gosh, it was so cute. So anyways, they hang out with them. They make these little like race cars out of uh, food, which is so cute. And then... They end up going into a painting with a shovel and pail and they end up playing tag with them and trying to find out who the animal is that is um, out in the sandbox or whatever and that's really cute and then they come back and he finishes Blue's Clues and finds out who uh, what Blue wants to do with Magenta and Basically, it's just a cute episode. I mean, they have Mailbox come and sing the We Just Got an Email song. And it's just, it's incredible. Like, it's just a really, really good episode. And I really love this. This is one of the few nostalgic properties where I'm really glad they rebooted it. And they did it in a very genuine and good way. Because they could have made it really high tech. They could have made it really 2019. And I would have hated it. But they really just took the elements from the original show and put it in 2019 by giving him a cell phone or making him have email or, you know, um, having a camera phone and, you know, being able to video chat. Like, those things are cool and I like that. But they didn't make it to 2019, you know? Like, this still could, in 20 years, still be shown to kids even if the most high-tech technology is being shown and they could still like get something out of it and I think that's beautiful and you know just shout out to Josh again because he's an incredible host and I think he's going to do incredible on the show and um from a clip I've seen recently from the show I saw they're gonna have an episode where Steve and Joe get called on the phone and it's the most incredible nostalgic thing for all of us parents well I'm not a parent yet but I'll probably end up tuning into the show every now and again just because I can because I'm a 28 year old woman and I love to watch nostalgic properties from my childhood so I do what I want but um don't judge me but um yeah they have that and that's really sweet like I've seen a clip of that and that was like so sweet and I was just like you know what you Blue's Clues you're in good hands Nickelodeon is actually doing something right for once and doing something good with their nostalgic properties Speaking of another nostalgic property from Nickelodeon that we have to talk about is All That. Now, I put up a blog post a while ago back when All That first premiered and I was a little bit skeptical. In the past, All That has had a really terrible reboot that they came out with in the 2000s and I was not vibing with it at all. And I was nervous that this one would be just as bad. But honestly, I've seen a few clips and I've watched a couple of episodes of the show and I'll admit, these new group of kids are actually A1 funny. Like, they're actually pretty funny. Like, I did not expect it, but they actually are funny and they actually do their bits really well. I mean, they do them a lot, like, but they are good and they are perfect for who they are as people and their comedic style, and I love it. And, you know, other um, All That alumni have actually been on the show, including, of course, Kel, Keenan, Josh Server, Lori Beth Denberg, and the most recent one is Elisa Reyes. And I'm so happy that they have been able to bring back such a great nostalgic property. I think we've been lacking in a lot of good quality um, sketch comedy shows, even for just like in general, like SNL basically has sucked recently, like it's not that good anymore. And um, I mean, no offense, Keenan, I love you so much. And I'm glad that you've been able to be on the show for as long as you have, but I'm not gonna lie and act like SNL isn't dry. 
like it's become dry and it is what it is they've had a couple of good you know sketches here and there but for the most part it's pretty dry and i just that's that's what it is and um, of course mad tv is no more and in living color has passed its prime so you know unfortunately there haven't been that many good sketch comedy shows but i will say that if you were a fan of all that back in the 90s or even the early 2000s please go take a look at the new version you won't be disappointed give these kids a chance don't just rain on their parade because you're so nostalgic for your all that be nice and be caring and even if this isn't for you don't don't dump on them because they don't deserve it okay this isn't really for us it's for the new generation and if they choose to watch it and understand it and think it's funny great on them but you don't have to be mean or harsh and you don't have to rain on their parade because it's important for them and that's all that matters so if you want to go check it out um i will say my favorites from this new cast are nathan I really like what he does. He does this really good Ariana Grande um, impression and he also does this thing called canceled or whatever. I don't know how you, he does it, but basically he does this little thing where he's in this hot tub. It's kind of reminiscent a little bit of the Amanda Jacuzzi in The Amanda Show. Love The Amanda Show. Um, but basically he's in the jacuzzi and he's basically sipping on like this coconut and he basically goes, he basically goes, canceled whatever it is at the time he'll go uh, he'll go trick-or-treating canceled and then he'll just start talking about why it's canceled because he had like a bad experience trick-or-treating or whatever it's really cute and he's really sassy and i love that so that's really great um i also love the girl who took over vital information and if you haven't seen the first episode of the show there's this really incredible clip of Lori Beth Denberg basically handing down vital information to this new girl. And she's incredible, honestly. Like, I really do like her. I think she's great. And um, she does vital information really well. She really is giving the spirit of her version of vital information. And I think it's great. Um, and there's a lot of them. And they're just really, I think they're a talented group of kids. And not everything sticks for me. But I'm not going to lie and act like they're not a good group of kids because they are funny and they actually do their sketches really well. And of course, there's, you know, the nostalgic things that they put out there like Detective Dan is back and Ed from Good Burger is back, of course. And um, uh, they've also had Coach Creighton and they've also had the Loud Librarian, Mrs. Hush Hushbaum, and they've had um, so many so many and um now that alicia reyes is coming back for another season for the second season i pray that they do my one of my favorite sketches on the original all that with her and Lori beth which was the island girls i love it forever and ever 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 that was hilarious i love that sketch um and yeah, hopefully Keenan will come back and do some more sketches on there. Maybe he'll reprise Super Dude. Who knows? Maybe Repair Man, 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 Man will be making a uh, guest spot. Who knows? Their possibilities are endless. But they've got a good group of kids. And they've got enough new sketches that they've been doing that are pretty okay. And some of them are actually funny. There's actually one where um, the Vital Information Girl, Nathan, and um, this other kid who's Asian, they all are babies basically and doing like this gossip thing which is hilarious i actually like that sketch a lot and um there's this like mixed girl i think she's like mixed or like really light skinned black and she does beyonce really well like there are a lot of good sketches and i'm really proud of the new cast and i just want to send them so many good wishes and well being for this new all that and hopefully it is a lasting legacy like the original all that because all that is fire okay 100 percent fire Except for that once, those few seasons in the 2000s because those sucked. But uh, we don't need to talk about it at all, ever. Okay, so yeah, so Nickelodeon is all up in it, getting their nostalgic properties and bringing them back and being really cool about it. And you know, I think the best thing about Nickelodeon right now is that they got rid of Dan Schneider and are trying to, you know, rectify the fact that they suck. Which, that being said, Disney Plus became a thing, a reality in our lives, right? And Disney Plus, I actually decided to order. Now, me. I have the only streaming platforms that I actually own 
are Hulu and I use the uh, Netflix and I use Amazon Prime from my older sister. So, because me and my mom share it on our TV at my house. So, basically, um, I don't have to pay for Amazon Prime or Netflix, which is good. So I only had to really pay for Hulu. But now that I have Disney Plus, it's basically cut in half the cost of my Hulu. And I'd only have to pay for Hulu and Disney Plus at the same time, which is actually really good for me because I'm kind of poor and I need to be able to bundle things and make sure that they are a very equitable price for me, which I mean, $12.99 is not bad, actually. Like, originally, Disney Plus is like $5.99 or something like that. And that's not bad either. But I just wanted to bundle my Hulu and my Disney Plus so I could get one price in, one price in all. You know what I mean? It's pretty incredible, I will admit. Like, they have all your Disney Channel original movies. Not all of them, but a good majority. And all the ones that are really great. They have... A good majority of your favorite Disney Channel series except for they do not have the famous Jet Jackson and I'm not okay with that because rest in peace Lee Thompson Young okay in his memory y'all should be putting his show on there y'all need to be giving him residuals even though he's not alive still you should be giving him residuals and then putting it into suicide prevention because you have Robin Williams who rest in peace as well a legend you have movies from him on there which I love Robin Williams I do he's incredible we love him he is a goat but also Lee Thompson Young was really important for me growing up based on the fact that I'm a black person and on Disney Channel there wasn't a lot of black tv shows so having a famous Jeff Jackson on there was really important and um yeah Jet and Kyla forever. Stick it to me, Miss Megan Good. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, please go watch the Mr. Jackson on, there's a few episodes on YouTube somewhere. Go look it up. Basically, there was this episode where Jet and Megan Good fell in love for like an episode or two. And he was really supposed to be with Kyla, who which is, which is, which is his best friend. And there's a whole thing. And if you watch the famous Mr. Jackson movie, you'll know about that too. And Anyways, the famous Jet Jackson needs to be put on Disney Plus. That is all I'm trying to say. But also, My Day with the President's Daughter needs to be put on there. Model Behavior needs to be put on there. Wish Upon a Star needs to be put on there. And so many others. But for what they have at the moment, I'm actually really glad that they have the movies they have, right? So, Disney Plus being really great, having Marvel and, uh, of course, Star Wars and, of course, you know, the Disney stuff and all that... Nickelodeon said, well, damn, I guess we're not going to make any money at this point because we just are flops. Well, they decided, I guess, very recently, they were like, well, I guess since Disney wants to have all the streaming, we're going to have a deal with ne with uh, Netflix to make sure that Netflix doesn't bottom out. And we're just basically going to have all of our shows on Netflix. And then we're going to have basically a deal with netflix where we put out new shows for netflix exclusively and i'm like you know what nickelodeon you sneaky i'm here for it but you're sneaky but anyways as long as Di as long as nickelodeon does what disney does and puts their nostalgic properties from the 90s on their platform i'm okay with it because honestly like this is what i want you know i've been wanting all of these things for so long i've been wanting a channel where it was just old disney channel shows and movies like i just wanted that so bad and i've also wanted that for nickelodeon i mean we've gotten it in certain forms like with the 90s are all that and then the splat and whatever it is now nick rewind or whatever they're calling it now but basically that's what i've been wanting for so long and they're finally giving it to me and i think that all of my praying of nostalgic properties being let into this 21st century digital age is coming true and i'm so 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 happy about it so honestly i'm just so glad for all these nostalgic things that are being put out into the world i cannot wait to watch the new lizzie mcguire uh tv show that they're putting out on disney plus i'm so excited for that um so excited that i get to watch even stevens in its entirety on that iron man i've been wanting to watch that for so long lizzie mcguire's on there that's the Ravens on there. Ravens Home is on there. Like so many things that I just want to watch, and I'm so excited to be able to do that. And um, I, I recently was watching that. Now that I have it, I just decided to like watch a couple of episodes of Out of the Box. Do you remember that show? That was like a little kid show that was on Playhouse Disney, which 
again they need to put more playhouse disney nostalgic properties on there i mean come on jojo circus come on the koala brothers um hello pb and j otter let's go let's go let's go come on now let's do it but they do have out of the box and i used to like that show a lot i used to watch it a lot with my niece and nephew when i had to babysit them a lot and that show was actually really creative i just have to say like out of the box was one of those shows where i could just watch that show all the time because the fact that the whole premise of the show is that they built a whole like like um they built a whole like clubhouse out of boxes and then you go inside the clubhouse and it looks like this magical thing that just pops out of nowhere and i'm like you know what this is so creative i'm here for it like it was actually making kids want to be creative and then the fact that they use like recycled material to make the actual clubhouse a1 man that's incredible like you were guys are you're fighting global global warming and you're just helping out the environment and you're just being creative and you're just giving kids things to do after school like you were just a1 from day one okay yes we're here for it okay but um yeah they have handy manny on there which is good that was a good show too it was like the latin latinx version of um bob the builder which both incredible both great and um yeah they just need to put more uh playoffs disney shows on there from back in the day they need to show more of the uh disney series and they also need to put more magical world of disney movies on there and they also need to put some more um disney adjacent movies on there like like i said wish upon a star model behavior those are disney adjacent and they need to put them on there okay my day with the president's daughter get to it but they do have some of my faves on there which is incredible they have for me's world they have of course smart guy loving it loving it loving it total support they have holes on there of course gotta support gotta support gotta support they have the lion king movies they have timon and pumbaa they have the lion guard part of my aesthetic i gotta watch it gotta be part of it okay they just have the mother load and i'm excited to be able to watch all of these things and so yeah i'm just excited it's a really good time for streaming it's a really good time for nostalgic properties and i'm just excited so i really hope that nickelodeon comes through with their nostalgic properties and puts them on netflix properly and i'm just excited for everything to come for disney plus and everything to come for nostalgia in general because they're doing good things with this version of nostalgia and i hope they keep it up because honestly they sucked at it before but if they can keep it this way i'll be watching through and through so um yeah this is just a little bit of me rambling on about disney plus and blues clues and you and nickelodeon and netflix and all the things and just my childhood because i can and i love it and i'm a millennial and i'm nostalgic that's just that's my aesthetic i'm millennial i'm nostalgic and that's that so um if you're a nostalgic millennial then uh you'll like this video so make sure to subscribe and uh like this video if you like it and um until next time my beautiful millennials my beautiful peoples my beautiful whoever peace and blessings <laughs>